Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And today I'm going to review a video done by Alexander Leonidas, aka Alpha Destiny, aka Strap On Destiny. Now, some people say, Jason, why do you give him such a hard time? Honestly, because of the smoke and mirrors lifts and because of the above the knee rack pull. Uh, I'm, I'll be honest with you guys. Any person out here who is promoting that their followers do an above the knee rack pull uh, in a commercial gym that destroys people's bars and it's basically a useless exercise, they're going to catch criticism. That alone is enough to really, really give someone serious nonstop criticism. It really is. Um, but I'm going to set that aside, and here's the thing I'm going to point out. This video is an example of one of the reasons he and I have a big overlap of followers, uh, because I'm going to agree with about 70% of what he said in the video, right? There's only going to be about a third of this video that I think he got wrong. Uh, the other 70%, it sounds like it's a video I'm making. It literally sounds like the same stuff I've been saying for, you know, six, seven years on YouTube. And... He breaks down his, the three best check exercises to develop a big, massive chest. And I actually have a pretty big chest. Let's be realistic here. You guys can argue about that all you want, but I obviously do. So, let's come over and talk about it. Um, first one he mentions af after the first, the push-up, which we're going to get into that last because I'm going to disagree there. Uh, he talks about the flat pause bench. The flat pause bench with a barbell. Uh, I'm going to agree, and he's right. You go to any powerlifting meet. You go to any powerlifting meet and you look at guys at a certain threshold who are bench pressing because you have to pause bench and comp to look at raw bench pressers. They all have big chests. It is the norm, not the exception. And some of them built their chest exclusively with the bench press. Not all of them do accessory work for their chest. Yet, irrespective of that, they all have a big chest. And it's because mass moves mass. And when you are forced to pause bench, your chest will grow. If you get big, strong numbers on a pause bench, your chest is going to get bigger and it's going to get really big eventually and it's unavoidable. You literally cannot avoid it. The only guys who you see who claim they don't get a big chest from bench pressing are number one, either really weak on the bench or number two, they're not pausing at all. They're doing, they're doing partials or bouncing off their chest. They're bridging and bouncing off their chest and things like that. They're not pause benching. You have to have big, thick pecs to bench a heavy weight from a dead stop, from a pause on your chest. You have to. You can't get around it. Um, it. It will force it to happen. And so as he pointed out, and I'm going to agree, you go to a powerlifting meet, you look around, pecs are not a problem for powerlifters. Right? We can argue a lot of powerlifters don't have the best biceps. A lot of powerlifters might not have the best side delts. But you go and look at, at high-level powerlifters, and you don't see problems with things like pecs, lats, traps, hamstrings, you, you don't see any of those small on serious, strong power lifters ever, even, even drug tested ones, right? In fact, oftentimes those muscles are disproportionately developed. Uh, bench press, it will do it. Whether you do other accessories or not for your chest, it's going to get big. Uh, and again, you go to any powerlifting meet, and he's right, because he's been to powerlifting meets at this point. Uh, it's very, very blaringly obvious. Um, next one he pointed out was weighted dips. Again, I'm going to agree. In fact, I would say for someone whose goal is to get a really massive chest, I'm not saying you have to do both of them. I'm not saying you have to do both of them. But if you get really, really strong and do a lot of workload at either the pause bench or the weighted dip, you're going to have a big, thick chest. It is, again, almost unavoidable. Um, again, he likes to always use the, the anecdote of athletes. He talked about calisthenics athletes. I'm not really sure. And I'm sorry, guys. That's a thing that came out after my time, or it's like a, a cultural West Coast thing. It, it, I'm exclusively aware of calisthenics athletes due to YouTube, right? Just seeing YouTube videos. Had, had I never seen YouTube videos of guys who call themselves calisthenic athletes, I personally would not even be aware such a thing existed. I'm not particularly interested in it. But he has a point that you look at those guys and they do tons and tons of dips. And yeah, if you look at what the dip is, uh, you're going to develop a big chest. If you do thousands and thousands of reps every month on the dip, you're going to develop a big chest because, again, size and strength are correlated, but it's also a workload issue. And even though it's not hard to do five or six dips, it really isn't. It doesn't take very much strength even for, you know, a 180-pound man to do five or six dips. But if you're doing hundreds and hundreds of them every single week, yeah, you're, you're 
subjecting your chest to an enormous amount of workload. There's a stretch reflex there. You know, and he pointed out that uh, he feels the barbell is better than even the dumbbells for chest. I actually agree with that uh, biomechanically. Now, people would argue with the dumbbells, you can get a deeper stretch. That is true. You can get a stretch reflex, but they can't compete with the dip for that. The dip is king for stretch reflex on the pecs. All right, no other exercise that I'm aware of really has the total potential for the stretch reflex and the overload on your pectorals that a weighted dip has. It doesn't. Dumbbells don't even compete with that. Um, it's just the, the argument is that, you know, putting yourself into position, um, not having safety in place. Uh, but you, you don't have safeties in place on dumbbells either. You could overstretch just as easily with a dumbbell um, if you're not careful. So again, you have to have a little bit of care on the way to dip. It is, in some ways, can be a dangerous exercise, and I'll agree with that. But in terms of potential, um, they don't compete with that, right? Those dumbbells don't compete with the, the way to dip. It does everything you want to do with them better. And again, it's a great overall exercise for your entire upper body. It's going to make a lot of muscles grow. Fantastic lift. And as he pointed out, again, these calisthenic guys all have big chest from doing dips. Now what he jumped over to first, and this is where I'm going to really bother by it, is that he talked about, well, the push-up, and he put it as number one. And I, I'm sorry, I don't see that. Uh, I don't see that with the push-up. Um, again, unless you're doing a, some specialized version, like he's going over to a barbell and hanging plates and going to a barbell and doing push-ups on a barbell, why don't you just bench press at that point? I, I'm not sure what you're getting out of that. Again, that's a lot of setup effort. And if you already have a bench set up with a barbell there, you could have just loaded it up and done the bench. So again, we're getting into almost a redundant movement pattern. Um, now, is it to say that push-ups can't be used to increase work capacity? Like, let's say you wanted to specialize in, in chest development and it's a, it's a weak point and you're trying to increase work capacity on it. Or even some power lifters do use push-ups for work capacity on the bench. But the ones who are doing that are, are doing enormous amounts of it, right? It's part of their general physical preparedness. So it might be guys who are doing enormous amounts of benching uh, twice a week, who might have a, some sort of concurrent periodization, who are doing a max effort bench day and a dynamic effort or volume bench day every week. And then in between or afterwards in their fatigue, they end up doing a large numbers of push-ups. Or they do them on their off days. They end up doing two or 300 on their off days as a work capacity thing in general physical preparedness for their chest. But they're not getting that much chest development itself out of it. It's more of a work capacity and conditioning thing. It's, it's really what it comes down to. Uh, because truth be told, it's just hard to get enough load on your chest. And, and yes, you can load a push-up up to do a lot of weight, I guess, if you go through some, some convoluted methods. Where again, like I've never seen anyone do what I saw him do in the video, where you get on a bench and you're on the bar, and you have plates hanging and you're doing push-ups off of your bench press bar set in on your bench or in your rack, um, hanging them off of a belt. But again, at that point, you might as well just do a weighted dip or you might as well just do a bench press. Uh, I, I'm not understanding the point unless you're doing it for, again, a short-term exercise variation, right? Short-term exercise variation, which, again, we need from time to time for advanced lifters. Fair enough, I understand that. But to say that that's a mainstay or that it, it competes with the bench press or the weighted dip, I just don't think that it does. Um, and, I mean, the example that he used, he kind of used himself originally, and he didn't really have a big chest before he started benching heavy. He, he didn't. His chest wasn't big back then. His chest is bigger now as a result of benching, but not from the push-ups back in the day, right? It was underdeveloped. Um, and the same thing, we come back over to the calisthenics artist. You can't use guys who do thousands of dips every month possibly every week, which is a, a superior exercise to the push-up, and then claim that the push-ups are what contributed to their chest development, because it really didn't. Those guys built their chest off dips. Um, so I'm not really sure why the push-up is thrown in there. Uh, it's, again, because he likes the push-up, and that's fine. It's okay to like an exercise. You can like an exercise that's not particularly great, that you like for general physical preparedness or conditioning or work capacity, and that's fine. But it's not necessarily a good primary strength or muscle builder. You could love the burpee, right? You could love the burpee as a conditioning movement, and that's fine. But don't do burpees and think that you're going to build big quads as a result of doing burpees because you're probably not. You're probably not. Doesn't mean it can't be a good conditioning exercise for general physical preparedness, but we need to understand the difference here.
we need to understand the difference. So the, generally, the push-up itself is more of a work capacity exercise just due to the loading parameters of it. Um, and done normally, it also puts a large amount of stress on your wrists over time, has its own set of inflammation issues and everything else until you start doing specialized stuff for the push-up. And again, I always feel like at that point, you might as well just do bench press or dips. Just my opinion on it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.